Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rusty 7X609. I did a video yesterday about RVing and uh, RV, the RV lifestyle. Was it expensive? And I got a lot of comments. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down and answer some of them that I couldn't answer at length uh, during comment call and, and also the short answers I can type in. I'll expand on some of those because some of them are pretty good questions. And uh, so this is just answering your comments. Uh, this is Dale Pointer. He says, at one time I had a lot on the west coast, one on the east, and uh, one in Boca Tica, Texas, near Mexico. Dry camping did that for years. So, so he used a generator. And uh, so see, that's another way you can do your RVing that's uh, very inexpensive. You know, you, if you own you some lots, you can go there and dry camp and use a generator. And But you can't beat that. That's about as cheap as you can get. Uh, I don't dry camp at my home base here in Kingsland, Texas, or at uh, Capitan, New Mexico. I could. It's just that it gets so hot here in the summer in Texas, you can't run an AC using a um, using solar. Yeah, well, you can, but you got to have so much solar, it's ridiculous. But anyway, this is rather be fishing. He says, I do not know. I did not know that RV parks had become so expensive. I wanted to stay at a senior park so that I wouldn't want to deal with owning a house or mowing the grass. Actually, uh, rather be fishing. There's a perfect spot for you in East Texas. If you'll go to escapees.com and uh, do a little research on their senior RV park, they actually uh, have a senior, it's like a retirement home thing. You live in your RV and they kind of see that you take your meds and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a retirement home uh, where you stay in your RV. It is. Check it out. Escapees.com. <clears throat> Mark's, Marty C. says, I am probably going to look into this long-term RVing, tired of the huge yearly property taxes, and a lot of people are, monthly home payout, so much more afterwards, nothing left. Uh, just not sure where I would go, though. Have to do some research much about, much about it all. Yeah, you do. Because, uh, you know, uh, and for me, the western U.S. Uh, has a lot of uh, opportunities for inexpensive camping, uh, because they got a lot of government land out there, you know, you got national forests and stuff, so you can get by pretty cheap out there. And but, you know, what I would recommend before you do it, Marty, is to uh, rent you an RV and and go some places that you think you might want to go. Even though it'll cost, they're not cheap to rent an RV, that's for sure. Or you could buy, you could go in cheap and get you a, an inexpensive used unit and and try that for a while, but. You know, check it out because, you know, it's just like jumping off a diving board. You know, once you're in the air, it, it's too late to change your mind. You know, and that's kind of the way with RVing. Once you've committed to buying a, a big Class A or B or C or D or M or T, whatever, uh, then you're you're in the air, so to speak. Uh, you know, Lisa Carson says, make a friend of pencil and pen. Uh, actually, it's supposed to be make a friend of paper and pen, but it's the same result. Uh, this is KVNM something here. It says, it says, I'm now in the process of converting a 6 by 12 foot cargo trailer into an RV, a lot less than buying a new or used RV. And that's probably true. However, you know, if you, it, for those of you that have the skills, and I've talked about this in other videos, then, you know, uh, converting a van or, or a cargo trailer or something like that, yeah, that's an option. And can you live in them? Sure, people do it all the time. Uh, you know how comfortable they are. I don't know that. You know, but of course, if you've made that choice, you'll make yourself comfortable because you can food, you can change uh, as you go. But uh, yeah, but you have to have you, know, you have to be handy with tools and kind of know a little bit about electrical and stuff to get it all done right on your own. And yeah, if you can do that, then it will be less than for sure buying a an RV, a new one or even a used one probably. Jay Jones. Says loads of good inf information here. Saw the casita in the flesh for the first time while leaving Zion National Park. Uh, it says they're beautiful trailers. Let me tell you, the, the casita is a very good travel trailer for some people. Uh, it's small. One, I mentioned this in the video. One person good, two person, three out. You know, it's just not very roomy. It's got 84 square feet on the inside. One person's okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. It says, uh, right, right, says, it says, Rusty, this is Don, he says, Rusty here in Macomb, Mississippi, I own 26 acres with a home and it's all paid for. 
Uh, I am 70 and we do not pay property taxes after 65, so we pay utilities and insurance. We own a 2007 Casita under the shed, but rarely use it. Well, you know, that's, that's the way most RVs are, all right? People buy an RV with the intention of using it quite a bit. They use it six or eight times and then it's parked because, you know, the, the thrill's gone out of it. You, you did it. And, uh, you know, uh, there, there's a, here, here's one here, Butch Kellen says, I like the confirmation of what I've learned from you and many others would like to hear a fresh or novel perspective you have on how you have coped with boondocking challenges. I have chosen to go with no running water, a composting toilet, no tanks, but I have a wood burning stove and a medium solar setup. Well, you know, all of that will work for you if that's what you want to do, you know. Uh, the you, next thing you're going to need is, is some kind of a cooler or, you know, ice chest or something to keep stuff fresh. Uh, you can get you a Dometic, uh, the CF-18, I think they're discontinuing it or they're not going to uh, warrant it anymore or something. There's been a change there on the on the Dometic, uh, the portable 12 volt refrigerators. Yeah, but if you can get one, uh, that would be a big help for you. Uh, as far as the uh, you know boondocking challenges, of course, keeping food fresh is one. Uh, as far as pooping and peeing, that's you, know, you got acres and acres. You understand? But you know what I do when I'm out is I, I you know I used to, I did use a, I did use a luggable loo, which is basically a five gallon can with a you know, you just put a, it's got a little toilet lid on it and you just put a plastic bag in there and then dispose of your waste in a trash can somewhere. And if people think that's uh, something wrong with that, well, you know, people throw diapers, baby diapers in there by the millions every day across the whole world and also adult diapers from rest homes and stuff like that. So, and it's fine that I don't think human poop is a toxic at this point. That may be somewhere later on. Uh, but, you know, at, you know, see, he's got a setup that he likes and that that's what, I recommend for all of you is is uh, you know pick a direction and go and you know as far as the expense I had somebody ask you know it says oh here it is right here Angie Thomas says how much savings would you need to invest in a full-time RV lifestyle to prevent added monthly payments of a rig property land upgrades etc many people are selling and reinvesting in nomadic lifestyle but what's the expected amount to start well that varies from very little to very a lot uh, I'll just give you my example. Uh, I won't talk about when I started. Well, I could, but we'll go back to that. I owned a pickup, a, a, a 1979 Chevrolet V8 automatic pickup, 350 engine. It would probably tow about 5,000 pounds in that range, maybe slightly more, but I doubt it. <clears throat> and I bought a used travel trailer, an Aljo was the name of it, a 26-foot travel trailer for $4,500. Uh, it weighed too much for the truck. I know that now. I didn't know it then. And so, you know, I got into RVing for $4,500. That was my first go, okay? I had a used, I had an old truck and that was paid for and away I went. So that, that's one way to look at it. And then how much savings, you know, it depends. You know, if you go new, new, in other words, a new RV and a new tow vehicle, if you're gonna tow a travel trailer, for example, me, I've got a 2017 truck and a 2019 Casita. The truck drive out when I bought it was like $22,000 and the, uh, the uh, it was a Ram pickup, and this uh, Casita was 20, so that's $42,000. And so that's that's another way to look at it. Now, if you start looking at class A's, B's, and C's, uh, you can triple that, okay? Because, uh, you know, it, it, the, the least expensive class C, new, is gonna cost you around $45,000 if you can find one, all right? Now, when you start going used on class A, B's, and C's, uh, you're basically buying a used car. Just remember that because it's got a motor and a transmission and all that other stuff that go with a, 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 a with a car. And you know you got to change the oil. So when you're you know the the downside for me of class A, B, and C living in them and even a van because I looked at all of them is you know whenever you go to an oil ch get an oil change you're taking your house or you know if you have a mechanical problem with the motor then they're going to be climbing around inside your house to repair whatever that is, because they got to get to the engine, you know, and the engine's usually part of its inside and part of its outside, you know what I mean? So, but, the, you know, as far as, as the expected amount to start, you know, pick a number and go, because it could be anywhere from, like I said, 4,500 for me, because I own the pickup, or all the way up to 150, or, you know, whatever you want. Uh, so that that's kind of, <clears throat> that's kind of hard to put a number on. Uh, 
it says, uh, rather be fishing. It says you were, you were smart to buy your, the, it says, to buy in, on the land in your location because of the out-of-state invasion. Yeah, we've had, we've had a lot of people move in here. And, of course, the, the, uh, the uh, property values in this area have quadrupled since I've been here 16 years. And, uh, th but, again, uh, to get into RVing, it, it's up to you. Your budget determines what you're going to end up with. Uh, whether it is a drivable unit or a towable unit, doesn't matter. That's your pick. Uh, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Some people like the convenience of driving the Class A's, B's, and C's because, you know, they put a tow vehicle behind them, and when they get somewhere, they've got the tow vehicle to go grocery shopping and, and tour in the countryside, and usually they tow a very economical vehicle because they only get, well, if you've got a Class A and you got 10 miles of the gallon, you can pat yourself on the back. Uh, if you got a Class C, uh, probably around the same, maybe, uh, maybe a little better, just depending on how you drive. Uh, and then the Class Bs, which are basically just van conversions, uh, you know, you can get 18 to 20 miles a gallon in those, but again, you don't have much space either. You know, I've got more space in this, not by much, but I've got more space in my 17-foot casita than they do in most or all Class B uh, RVs. And uh, so, you know, you got to, again, an easy way to find out if you're going to like RVing and probably the least expensive way to find out if you can, if there's a place in your area, rent an RV, you know, rent, and it could, you know, if, even if you think you're going to end up in a travel trailer, if there's only, if they only have class C's in your area to rent, rent a class C because it's still got all the hookups. You're still going to be going down the highway uh, in a, if, with a vehicle you're not used to driving. And when you're towing a travel trailer, you got to get used to that also. And you'll get a feel for it because if you go into these RV parks and you'll see what's there in the state parks and the national parks. And if you choose to, you go boondocking or out in national park or excuse me, forest and uh, do what they call dispersed camping and uh, see, see if that's something you enjoy because it, you know, all that glitters is not gold. A lot of pyrite out there, I'll tell you that. A fool's gold. But uh, again, uh, I just wanted to touch on some of these because uh, I know that there, if, if somebody has a question, then usually there are several other people that might have had that same question. So that's why I'm taking uh, the, the time to do this. James says, many places will not allow you to live on vacant land and a camper. How did you get around this issue. Well, the way I got around it is in Texas, there's a number of places where you can put an RV uh, that are unrestricted. This particular subdivision that I live in does have restrictions, but the Property Owners Association is inactive. That's one. And then number two, I'm seasonal. They allowed me to be what's called seasonal, so I don't come under their guidelines, okay? And, uh, and, and that helps a lot. But you can find land in Texas at a number of places where you can park an RV and live in it. Now, you, now, in West Texas, there's a lot of land you can buy pretty cheap. You can go to on to Terlingua to, to Ranch and look at the property there. Uh, the the it's uh, it's Terlingua Ranch. I'm not sure if it's TerlinguaRanch.com. That might get you to something. But the Property Owners Association of Terlingua Ranch Incorporated uh, is where you want to go because they'll have listings uh, of land out there for sale by owner. And and you go to P O A T R I dot O R G. I'll repeat that. P O A T R I dot org. And that'll get you to the Property Owners Association. And then there's a place there to click a link to property for sale by owner. Yeah. And it's cheap and it's unrestricted. You could put a, uh, you, can, you can live on the ground out there if you want to. You don't have to have anything. But having said that, uh, I just thought I'd do this, and I want you to enjoy your, uh, here's one here, rather be fishing. It says, my taxes are $8,100 a year, insurance $1,900 a year, that's $10,000. I keep the heater at 66, horrible. My sister's house in Travis County is worth three times, and she pays about $2,400. Well, it's all about location, location, location. But having said that, for those of you that have sticks and bricks home, and you're retired and you're thinking about going full-time and selling your home, uh, 
plan, in my, in my opinion, plan to have you a home base somewhere. You know, you know, just as you're traveling around, you know, look for a lots or you know different places to park your RV during the winter or and summer if you choose to have you two places go back and forth and i think that'll add a little more enjoyment to the whole venture but having said that guys thumbs up carpe diem adios bye bye buy anything you want anytime but if you think about it use the link to amazon products in the description of all of my videos why you know why anyway what else drink plenty of water three or four quarts a day won't hurt you it's good for you it'll help you avoid gout kidney stones also help you lose weight because you'll be full of water and you won't want to eat so much what else? Take deep breaths. Breathe in really deep through your mouth or your nose. It really doesn't matter. Just take a good deep breath. Hold it for a few seconds. Breathe out slowly. What does that do? Lower stress. Whenever you lower stress, you lower your blood pressure. Is that good for you? I believe it is. And then what else? Stretch, stretch, stretch. Swivel, swivel, swivel. Walk, walk, walk. Exercise your body once or twice a day. You'll never regret it. You'll live healthier longer. And then what else? Stand guard at the door of your mind. Do not let negative Nancy or negative Ned get inside of your head. This is your head, your brain, your frontal lobes. This is your consciousness up here. And all those little neurons up there are firing across synaptic gaps and, and forming your thoughts, your consciousness. So don't let somebody dump trash in your mind. You got it? Very simple. Accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and enjoy your life one day at a time. Just remember, today is the first day of the rest of your life, and that's true. No one can debate that, right? So having said that, enjoy your weekend. Just thought I'd follow up on this. And if you got comments, any questions you have, leave them. And, and I'll try to get to every one of them because I know there's people out there that are thinking about doing these things. See, when I started, I didn't have any help at all. You know, I've been doing it for 25 years. So anyway, adios amigos. Carry on. Adios. Adios.